This week, we've been talking about destructive behaviors, mm -hmm. um, some that are intentional, right. like conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder, mm -hmm. and some that are more um, unintended, right. some that are caused by dysregulation of, of various sorts, mm -hmm. uh, impulsivity with, right. um, in the case of ADHD, and um, mood and emotional dysregulation right. in the case of destructive mood dysregulation disorder. Right, and we wanted to talk about these disorders because um, all of them have this um, impulsive um, release of right. emotions, mm -hmm. okay, of temper tantrums and mm -hmm. emotional meltdowns. And, and so they all, all of the children who fall into these categories will um, ha t occasionally have these outbursts, right. okay? And the question we're always asked by parents and teachers, is it a serious thing that I should right. be worried about? Or is it just the, you know, the garden variety temper tantrum mm -hmm. or um, stomping your feet so you get your way, right. okay? And, and so they, they ask that question. Mm -hmm. And it's not always a simple answer, right. okay? So we began with this idea of losing your temper, having an emotional meltdown, and then separating them so that you can um, select the right intervention, right. okay? So yesterday, in yesterday's podcast, we talked about um, ADHD mm -hmm. is a disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder. You're born with it and you have right. these symptoms. ODD and CD, oppositional defiant disorder and conduct disorder are disorders of impulse control. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, developmental um, dysfunctional mood dis dysregulation disorder. Disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Right. Mm -hmm. Is a mood disorder. Right. Okay. So they fall into these Although it looks the same, the morphology of their behavior is the same, they fall into three very different categories right. that um, suggest that we should have different treatments for each right. group. Okay, So we want to talk about that. It, we understand that it's complex, but stay mm -hmm. with us and we'll kind of walk you through it right. a step at a time. Yeah, and so we're going to talk about the treatment and, and, and kind of specifically we're going to talk about how parents might best respond to some of these, these different um, right. categories. Yeah, and I, when, when I was, th as I was thinking about these, I thought there are some interventions that probably apply to all three mm -hmm. groups. Right. And then there's a second set that apply uniquely to, to each one. Each one mm -hmm. Okay. So the general ones are things that you and I talk about all the time, the big four, right? right? right. right. And we've, we've been through that a few times. Yeah. Tro trod through that a few times. Right. Um, and they are that all, of, and the other thing to remember is, we're talking about diagnoses, mm -hmm. okay? And one of the things we want to emphasize is that we talked about intention mm -hmm. all through the week. These kids have different brains. Right. I think the, the evidence is very clear mm -hmm. that we're not just talking about um, a, a typically developing child who wants something mm -hmm. and has a tantrum. Mm -hmm. We're talking about kids who are substantially, they are substantially different. Right. These are persistent, right. intense, long, long lasting disorders, mm -hmm. okay? And so in most of these cases, the, the children don't want to be this way, but their brains are deceiving them, mm -hmm. their, their brains are, Right. They have less impulse control. They have right. more emotion. Mm -hmm. They have fluctuating emotions. They right. have emotions that they can't always control. Right. So it's not, in a sense, it's not really their fault. Mm -hmm. And so one of the cautions is, this is more than bad choices. Right. You know, we hear parents and teachers, well, you're making bad choices. Sometimes these kids are not making bad choices. They're doing what their brains drive them to do. And this is mo mostly the case with ADHD in disruptive right. mood dysregulation disorder. That's right. we'll, we'll talk a little bit about conduct disorder and oppositional mm -hmm. defiant disorder and how those are a little bit different. But, right. um, but yeah, you know, the, with, with all four mm -hmm. um, of these diagnoses, you know, it's important that we, that we remember you know, healthy lifestyle stuff. Right. You know, the, That's right. the, the core four that we talk about with mm -hmm. diet and exercise and stress management and sleep, you know, it's important right. that those four things are maintained consistently you know with with all kids in general but certainly with kids who have some of these difficulties and that's where the that's where the intervention starts right i mean if you, if you can't do that i think the the mistake that many of us make is we think well i can maintain my current ways of doing mm -hmm. things my current lifestyle and i'll just add medication right okay that's almost never going to work right okay so the beginning regardless of which category whether it's impulse 
disruption, mood. Um, uh, it does. It doesn't matter. You have to first address. You have to organize their lives. Right. Okay. What What do these kids lack? They lack self regulation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing we have to do is we have to begin to impose regulation. Right. Okay. And that's lifestyle. They have to sleep well. Mm -hmm. In In every case, these kids don't sleep well. Right. Okay. Uh, they have to eat well. They mm -hmm. have to eat. Uh, they have to think of food as medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they have to. You, we have to be careful about diets. And scheduling food and not letting them get too hungry, right. not hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, um, sleeping, eating, exercising. Mm -hmm. they, they these kids have to move. They have right. to move around. And the last is managing their stress. They are going to be stressed. These mm -hmm. are kids who are chronically in trouble. Right. They're always under stress. Yeah. So we have to help them manage their stress. Right. Okay? They, don't, they don't do these things on their own. Yeah. So the first job of parents is you have to organize their lives mm -hmm. for them. Okay. Right. So beyond those mm -hmm. um, sort of general um, baseline That's treatments right. that we have to think about, e each of these categories of um, conditions require something more specific. Right. Um, so ADHD, right. for example, um, you know, certainly one of the first lines of treatment um, for treatment of um, ADHD is medication. Right. Um, Primarily stimulant me medication, and we're going to be in the future. We're going to talk about some updates about ADHD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and next week I know this is a medicating children is a controversial issue, sure. but the research there's been thirty two thousand thirty two thousand articles published on ADHD. They're not all about medication, but everything that comes out says the first line of treatment is medication. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you have to start with right. that. You may not. Continue, but you have to start with that. Right, mm -hmm. and and I, we're gonna again we're gonna focus on ADHD next week, mm -hmm. and and talk about you know the medication makes the child available to learn the things that we need them to learn. That's right. The regu mm -hmm. the, the self control, the self regulation, the organization, the planning, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Medication makes them available to learn those skills, and then in some eventuality, then you come off. You know, hopefully they'll be able to come off the medication and practice those skills and employ right. those skills once they've mastered them. Mm -hmm. That's right. So so medication is a, a, a very important treatment for mm -hmm. ADHD. Uh, but we also have non-medical right. treatments. And, and that's going to be a lot of work that you, the parent, does um, as far as structuring and organizing and, and maintaining mm -hmm. a, um, a consistent household. That's right. Um, so that the child, is, you know, life is predictable. Life mm -hmm. is, um, you know, if A happens, B happens, so that there's these direct connections that the child can um, learn. It will take the child longer uh, if they have ADHD to learn some of those connections. But if it's exactly the same every time, they're gonna be much more likely to learn it um, at a quicker mm -hmm. pace. That's right. Remember that all the things we're asking these children to do are frontal lobe, executive functions, organization and mm -hmm. planning and anticipation. The, that is exactly what they don't mm -hmm. have, okay? Right. And that's what you have to provide. Um, there are behavioral approaches. There, there are many ways to do this, mm -hmm. but you start with a structure and, and predictability, and that's what these kids need. That, mm -hmm. what, what are they lacking? They're lacking impulse control. Mm -hmm. They can't inhibit their emotions and their behavior. Right. And so you have to you have to provide that for them. You have right. to provide them a context in which they can succeed. Because right. they're not going to do it on their own. Right, okay. absolutely. Um, now, with these kids also, um, supplements. That's right. You know, there's mm -hmm. uh, kind of going along with the healthy diet, you know, there's supplements that are, that are very helpful right. and beneficial uh, for them. Um, ginkgo biloba, uh, magnesium, um, uh, um, zinc. There's omega-3. Omega-3. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a wide variety of supplements. And we've done podcasts before. Uh, on and topics. when we do the update, when next we do week. next week's update, we're going to talk about those supplements yeah. because the thing about kids with ADHD is they, they have too little of some things right. and too much of other things. So it's not just a matter of throwing supplements right. at them. You have, to, you have to throw the right supplements. Right. And you have to know. You really have to know what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. It's not just you don't just go to the health food store and say, "Well, I'm going to get this." Um, do it carefully. Right. But we're going to talk. We're going to do an update on that right. next, next week. week. But supplements. I think are an important um, arrow in the quiver. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and, and finally, when we think about ADHD, um, we would be sort of remiss without mentioning the issues related to school. Exactly. You know? uh, right. School is difficult for kids with ADHD, and so it's gonna be really important that there's 
some um, homeschool collaboration that right. the, the, the teacher understands what's going on, that the parents understand what's going on, and that the parents and teachers are working together. Again, right. consistency is so critical. Um, we have to make sure that the, the child's life is consistent in all mm -hmm. areas so that they are more likely to learn what we need them to learn. Right. If I were, when you think about the challenges that children with ADHD face, if I were to sit down and write a uh, plan mm -hmm. of what would be the worst thing that you could do with a child with ADHD, it would be, it would be sending them to school. Right. Schools require exactly all the, all the kids with ADHD that are listening to this are like yes <laughs> we know we it's understand the worst thing you could do right because school demands exactly what these kids don't possess right. okay yeah. everything that they need is it's just the opposite at school mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know and so th when you when you work with your kids who are in school remember that school demands exactly what these kids are unable to do right and i'm not unwilling to do that they're unable to do. Right, mm -hmm. right. So there keep that in mind. Patient. Everybody has to be patient with these yeah. kids because that's where the demand, I can't imagine putting me in a computer lab and saying, mm -hmm. here, fix these computers. I'd, I'd be, I would, I would be in, you all would be in bad shape if you put me in a computer, because it's not what I do. Yeah, you'd be asleep. Oh, but no, I would, I would run away. <laughs> I would run out of the building, so. All right, so now, now if we shift from ADHD to uh, conduct disorder and oppositional defiance, we're right. going to kind of talk about them together because right. yeah. both of them are, um, you know, as if you remember from us from earlier this week when we were talking about them, um, th these kids have outbursts that are much more intentional. Right. Uh, there's, much, there's much more um, of a goal uh, orientation to mm -hmm. their, their behaviors, and so they're, they're working for something, right. you know, they're doing right. these behaviors for something. Um, but unlike ADHD and uh, DMDD that we'll talk about in a moment, um, treatment for conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder is a little bit, I don't, I don't wanna say more difficult, but it's not as straightforward right. because of that intentionality, because it's, because it's intentional, there's not a medication. No. That's point number one. Right. There is no medication for these two. Right. You know, many times, and you mentioned this uh, earlier in the week, there's an overlap. Um, and many times kids with ADHD or conduct disorder, oppositional defiant disorder will also have ADHD. Mm -hmm. And so in those cases, um, the same treatment for ADHD may be employed and that may decrease some of that impulsivity right. and everything. But it's not necessarily not likely to take away the oppositional or the conduct behaviors. Right, that's right. It's not going to touch those. They're, they're right. still going to be there. They're more temperament, personality, mm -hmm. character, those sorts of things. The difference with these two, ODD and CD, kids with ADHD, are an, they're a pain in the neck, but when you leave school, when teachers leave school on a Friday, they kind of chuckle and say, boy, he was a handful today. We hope they do. Right. You don't chuckle about ODD and CD right. it, because it's it feels more personal. Right. And children, and it is, and it is. they yeah. they come after you. Okay, mm -hmm. they target you. There's mm -hmm. a predation with these kids, and there's an irritability with both mm -hmm. that we don't see right. with ADHD. Kids with ADHD are goofy and silly, and they're funny. They usually have a wonderful sense of humor. Kids with oppositional defiant disorder are irritable and they're angry, mm -hmm. and they they want to antagonize and they mm -hmm. want to uh, battle and struggle for control. Right. Okay. And, and, and the irritability here is different than the irritability with DMDD. Right. Um, and this irritability is that you can just it, it's not a does it make sense to say it's not a mood irritability? It's right. just sort of a. It's sort of an attitude it's irritability. It's a temperament irritability. Like yeah. I'm prickly and I'm I'm hard to get along with and I mm -hmm. wanna I'm disagreeable and right. you know, not the kind of mood you're right. It's not a mood irritability. Yeah. It's more of a temperament irritability. Yeah. And I just I just wanna if you tell me to do something, I'm gonna battle with you. Right. You know, right. kids with ADHD don't fight back. They, they right. might not do it, but they're not fighting back. Right. Okay. These kids will fight with you and right. argue with you, and it feels like you're you're in a battle for control. Right. You're not. You don't feel that with right. with the other. The kids with DMDD, and we'll talk about that in a second, are different. Again, it's a different kind of irritability. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So with conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder, the, these are circumstances where you really need to uh, start working with a mental health professional um, yeah. that's going to be able to help you. 
um, sort of organize things and manage things so that um, you know it decreases the impact of their right. their behaviors and so that you can really you know it kind of goes back to that that mm -hmm. structure and that organization and that right. planning you and, need all and, that um, mm -hmm. you know consistency in in the home uh, that's going to be critical for working with these kids right the other thing to remember the other difference with this disorder these disorders is that there is a uh, developmental um, organic ev evolution with them mm -hmm. um, with ADHD it's pretty much the same at every mm -hmm. developmental level you know that always poor impulse control and disinhibition the what we have to watch out for with this group is that a child a young child will start out being oppositional mm -hmm. but if they start breaking laws and they right. start violating serious social norms then it moves into conduct disorder right. and if we don't get control of conduct disorder the child turns 18 and it becomes antisocial personality disorder mm -hmm. So there's an, there's an evolution to this that mm -hmm. we need to keep an eye on, and right. it could change. And what we want to do is get it under control early right. so that oppositional defiant disorder doesn't morph into conduct right. disorder. Absolutely. These kids get punished. Mm -hmm. They are in power struggles. And if they meet parents and teachers who punish them severely, they can sour mm -hmm. and become malignant. Right. And so ODD then can become CD because they're expressing that anger in antisocial ways. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, so this, these are circumstances where you really need uh, the help of uh, right. a mental health professional. Mm -hmm. um, uh, lastly, with this group, um, there, there's some research to suggest that kids with conduct disorder especially, but also oppositional defiant disorder, they're a little bit um, neurologically under aroused. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that means is that they are constantly seeking stimulation. Mm -hmm. But it's, again, very different than the stimulation that ADHD kids are looking right. for. Uh, these kids are looking for stimulation, um, and they're doing it in that predatory type of way. Right. Uh, what can I, what can, how can I get a rise out of this person? What, and, yeah, what turns them on is a, is right. a little different right. than, than a kid with ADHD. A kid with ADHD wants to have fun with others. Right. Uh, child, these children want to torment others. Right, and, and I think that the difference is the impulsivity. You know, right. kids with ADHD, you know, they're, if you have them sitting on a couch, you know, they're not going to sit still, but it's like it's going to be impulsive, and so they're right. fidget, fidgeting right. and mm -hmm. twitching and, and all that kind of stuff. With the person with oppositional defiant or conduct disorder, if they sit on the couch, you don't see that same type of right. fidgetiness or that impulsivity. Um, and if they sit still uh, mm -hmm. long enough, because of some of that neurological under arousal, they may even fall asleep. Right. You know. That's right. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm have, I've had kids in my office with um, with these conditions who, you know, they're almost falling asleep. They um, they are clearly under aroused. Right. Mm -hmm. But to stay awake, and because they don't have that fidgety right. impulsiveness, you can see them start. Conniving, start right. planning. They do. That you you can see them. You can see the predation. You can right. see that they're they're scanning the environment, looking for something right. um, uh, to do. Right. Okay. And it's usually a, not a very good thing to do because of this underlying irritability that right. they have. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, lastly, with the DMDD, right. uh, disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, like with ADHD, first line is medication. Right. Um, you got to put the fire out. We have mm -hmm. to put the fire out if. You know, we have that, as we talked about yesterday, chronic irritability, and this is mood mm -hmm. irritability. This is right. um, walking on eggshells, is what parents right. say. This is, yeah. Um, yeah, this is on edge, ready to, ready to be set off at any time. Right. Now, interestingly, what you will find is that these kids are typically different at school. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, this, um, as we said yesterday, these symptoms have to be present in more than one setting, but those settings tend to be home at grandmother's house, um, and so Athletic kind of field. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but they tend to be okay in managed school. at school. Most of the, the overwhelming majority mm -hmm. will be under control when they're at school. At least for the first three quarters of the school year. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes um, some of these kids during the last quarter or so, mm -hmm. you'll start to see some of that because they've now become very right. comfortable and it's getting the anticipation of the end of the school year and those kinds mm -hmm. of things start to mount and then you might see some stuff then. But otherwise, uh, they, they tend to be okay at school. And I, we think that that tends to be the case because the when you talk to these kids and you find out why they don't behave like that mm -hmm. at school, they are terrified of the principal. 
or of some type of trouble that they're going to get in at school. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, they, they are um, so tightly contained um, there. Um, but that also is what leads to some of the issues once they get home, because as soon as they release some of that, mm -hmm. it, 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 it releases. And the other thing is, is they don't want other students to know. They don't right. want their friends to know that they have these massive right. outbursts. Okay, yeah. so there's, they don't want to do it in public. Mm -hmm. Okay, they'll wait until they get into the right. privacy of their homes. And usually mother is at home right. when they get home, and that's when the release right. occurs. Um, when it comes to medication with these children, remember we're talking about a mood disorder. Mm -hmm. And if I have a patient who has bipolar disorder, uh, uh, the first thing I would do is reach for medic. We all reach for medication. Right. We don't expect a person with bipolar disorder to manage without medication. Mm -hmm. okay? Severe depression, mm -hmm. we reach for medication. Right. This is a severe mood disorder. Right. And so you have, to, you have to begin with some kind of right. medication because it will be impossible, and I mean impossible, to manage these children without some type of medication that stabilizes their brain just a little bit. Absolutely. You know? so, uh, the medications are, are not e easy to use and they're, it's, a, it's a difficult decision for many parents to make, but it is the first step. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the medications tend to come from uh, sort of an informal category mm -hmm. of medications called uh, mood stabilizers and, and medications within that category come mm -hmm. from different places. So you may get uh, right. anti-epileptic um, medications like mm -hmm. uh, Depakote and, and those kinds of right. things. And, but they may also come from the antipsychotic family, right. like Abilify and Risperdal mm -hmm. and things like right. that. So, um, so it is a, a, a massive decision for parents, right. uh, but you have to put the fire it's out. It's the only way you're going to get on the right track. And once you get the fire out with the medication, the, the job is to keep the fire out in the home. Right. That's right. I mean, you have to keep a home very cool. Right. <laughs> very, That's right. You know, there can't be a lot of emotionality. Um, it, they call it expressed emotion, EE. -E. Right. We have to keep that expressed emotion sort of at a minimal in the home. And that's positive emotion and negative emotion mm -hmm. because too much emotional energy is going to get these kids wound up very, very easily. Right. One of the things I tell parents is a little stimulation goes a very long right. way with these kids. You, you, you provoke them a little too much, mm -hmm. a little too far. You cannot poke these kids. You mm -hmm. have to use a non-confrontational right. approach. Parents will always come in and always say, well, I have to punish him because right. he broke this, or I have to, there have to be some consequences for these explosive outbursts. No, there don't. There do not have to be consequences right. for them. The child has no intentionality right. here. It, it's not, just a release. Certainly not the consequences that you're thinking about. <laughs> right, right. There, 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 there may be consequences, but there, there are different kinds of consequences. Right. There, there's a wide variety of consequences mm -hmm. that we can apply to, to get the point across that you're trying to get across. Right. There, there's no reason to be in these kids' faces or, or to be so confrontational with these kids because mm -hmm. they're going to be confrontational back. It, and You start poking them. And I know that there's gonna be people with the, who, who are listening to this who um, you know are, are not gonna be happy that I say this, but um, they're going to win. Yeah. A lot of those Eventually. battles, yeah. mm -hmm. because they will go lengths that you won't go. Th that you can't go. You're not allowed to go to right. those lengths as a parent, and so you have a different set of rules than they do. So it's not a fair fight. It's not, and they're going to win most of them. So, so don't engage in that kind of battle. Right. You know, um, Ross Green. We, right. we 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 love his approach. The non-confrontational, collaborative approach mm -hmm. um, is really good. Um, you know, check out his book, The Explosive Child. Right. Um, it's it's a wonderful. Uh, resource for parents who are dealing with some of these issues right. and it helps break it down for you a little bit. Right. You want to do, and what Ross Green will teach you is you want to do everything you can to prevent outbursts mm -hmm. because the more outbursts a child has, mm -hmm. the more outbursts the child will have. Right. Because the brain gets good at what it does repeatedly. And right. so if a child is constantly having outbursts, they're going to have more outbursts. Right. Okay, so so your first goal is to pre is prevention. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and we can we, we have a four step process here that we use in the mm -hmm. office. But this is a these are difficult kids to manage Absolutely. and at all costs avoid power struggles. Definitely. So, all right. Very good. Well, that is it then uh, for treatment. We we'll probably spend more time on DMDD um, in some future podcasts because right. we really need to spend more time with that. It's a yeah. it's a 
it's a challenging it's a different condition so mm -hmm. all right until next time stay happy stay healthy and forget to be afraid Thank you.